Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cat Timp Show. Today, my guest is Gavin McGinnis. McGinnis, hard McKinnis, C, please. McGinnis. Thank you. There we go. You're drawing something. Drawing something over there. Drawing a little dude. A little dude. Gavin, you've like, I don't know, you've probably, it's funny because I've had a lot of people on a lot of my shows that have been in trouble for saying things that are offensive, but I've, <laughs> you just, <laughs> they don't even know what that means compared to, uh, to what you've dealt with for things that you said. Um, you have this idea with like hate, what, what do you call it, hate facts? Hate facts, yeah. <laughs> and explain hate facts. Well, you know, Anthony brought this up, Anthony Cumia, after we did Red Eye one night, this was probably about four or five years ago, and he said, uh, he said, when did saying something that's true become <laughs> offensive? Mm -hmm. And I, I hadn't really thought about that before, but that was around the same time the Canadian Human Rights Commission had made it very clear mm -hmm. that you can be racist, prejudiced, bigoted, xenophobic, even if the thing is true. In Canada, with the Human Rights Commission, anything that is negative about a group, mm -hmm. true or false, yeah. is grounds for a suit. Yeah, absolutely. That includes Schindler's List. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sort of God, because it is a negative portrayal of Germans. Yeah. So that's a hate movie against Germans. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, hate speech. I don't think people understand that, like, hate speech in America is supposed to, it's still allowed. Yeah. Like, if free speech, it's like, even if it's hateful, it's like, you don't like that, per like, then don't, don't talk to that person. Well, they always <laughs> say that. They go, free speech doesn't include hate speech. And you go... What does it include? Van Halen or a good band? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have the right to say that. Yeah. You, know what? you can say Van Halen or a good band in Russia, in, you know, Nazi Germany. That's never been an issue. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well what was, what, 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 have you gotten any, any flack for anything recently? I can't even keep Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Jesse Hughes thing with Eagles of Death Metal, I mm -hmm. got flack from Jesse Hughes. Oh, yeah? For... He goes, why did you steal that interview? I didn't know I was being recorded. Yeah. And I go, come on, dude. <laughs> we were talking on video Skype. <laughs> yeah. I go, meeting someone through video Skype is gay. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine? Or video Skype. Yeah, I, I, I don't even like, know. Like, imagine I'm... I said to you, oh, I, well, I want you to meet this guy, Sam. And, yeah. and you'd go, yeah, sure, I'll meet him. Yeah. You'd go, he wants to meet you through video Skype. <laughs> you'd go, well, how about when he's in town next? That's, yeah, that's like, never Like, even if I handed the phone, you go, Sam wants to meet you. You'd go, <laughs> No. <laughs> Yeah, I got people sometimes who like randomly FaceTime me too. Like, and they're like, why? Like, I, I was uh, dating someone for a while who would randomly FaceTime me. And then if I didn't answer, he'd be like, why are you doing? Why can't you answer? It's like, I look like shit. I don't want to talk to you right <laughs> yeah. now. Leave me alone. FaceTime, man. Every time I see FaceTime, I just assume it's a butt dial. Me too. I do too. Why would you ever want that? Unless it's Nana wanting to see the kitties. Yeah, Nana. You got a Nana. Peers don't. No. Well, my mom is Nana. My mother in law is Gaga. Mm. The Indian tribe, the Ho Chunks, <laughs> the grandmas were called Kaka yeah, until you're... they realized that's poo poo, so they changed it to Gaga. Yeah. Now Lady Gaga comes along, they gotta fucking change it again. Oh, wow. Yeah, they have to now. Maybe Baba? That's Baba. a blanket. Baba, I think people do Baba, I think. All right, I got. I'm gonna do. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an ad. I'm gonna do an ad read. I'm gonna get this. Do gonna it, get this girl. going because I got to. This is great. It's a Casper Casper mattress. Okay, you you want you want a great. Mattress. It's it's an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair sp a shockingly fair price. Okay, not just fair, but shockingly fair. And you can get fifty dollars towards any mattress purchase by visiting www.casper.com/cat k a t as in me using the promo code k a t as in me also. Um, Time magazine named it one of the best inventions of 2015. It is now the most awarded mattress of the decade. Okay, so it's the best invention of 2015, even though it's it's a mattress. Okay, you can try Casper for 100 nights risk free in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up. Kind of annoying to get rid of a mattress, but they'll pick it up. They'll refund you for everything made in America, which is all so great. So fifty dollars towards any mattress purchase www.casper.com slash K-A-T as in me. Use the promo code CATS. How was that? Is that good? That was amazing. Was I want to really buy good? one. Yeah, don't you? Did they do a good job? How do they stay in business with those prices? I don't know. It's so reasonable and so affordable. I know you've had problems with ad reads, so I feel like uh, I didn't. You... <laughs> I did lose a flower client once because I said, and one of the lines was, no mom can resist. Yeah. And I made it clear we don't want you to seduce your mother. <laughs> Motherfucker being the worst word in the English language. Right. They were gone. 
They were gone. Are we allowed to swear on this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Did you? How did? How, how did that? Did they email you? Like, how did that go? No one tells you what's going on. We're like China now. <laughs> yeah. It's all saving face. Yeah. I taught English in China for a while, and I, I had this client who, um, she wasn't, who wouldn't talk. You know, yeah. the Chinese are shy. Yeah. And uh, she told me that there's a sort of a prostitution ring going on with the housewives there. Yeah. Where they exchange sex for purses and shit, <laughs> even though they're married. And I go. Pfft. This is the most fascinating thing I've ever heard. Yeah. And it was getting her to talk. So I would correct her grammar, but I'd also hear this great story. Yeah. And then I come in the next day, and there's a post-it note on their door that says, Ching Chao Ne has been sent to Hong Kong yeah. on a job. Now, I knew she was a secretary. You, yeah. You don't need to fucking fly a typist <laughs> over to Hong Kong, but the Chinese don't tell you what's going on. Mm. They just sort of, ooh, uh, no, there's been a fire. You can't come to my party. So you're just assuming it was because you said... <laughs> yeah, the timing was too exact. <laughs> and s some people said it was that. Other people said, you know, it's their, their contract expired. and. Because we live in this era where people are pilloried all the time and there's yeah. always witch hunts, yeah. no one wants to get involved. Right. So unless it's like some guy said nigger or faggot, right. and it was just like, I don't like that guy or I, he seems controversial, then they just get rid of you and they won't say why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those, those you can't say, uh, obviously. Well, there's so many people out there who have lost their jobs yeah. and aren't lucky enough to have a witch hunt to pin it on. Yeah, that's true. Like they hugged a woman. Yeah. And then she complained and HR didn't want to get involved. So they just said, oh, your contract's expired. Yeah. And I was like, was it because of that weird hug I did? That's true. I never thought. I mean, there's there's places where, you know, I, I have friends who work in, you know, with, with me, I don't work in places like this. But where it's like somebody like comp, if you say like, oh, you look nice today, they'll like be like, thank you. But then they'll go to their like boss and be like, I was sexually harassed by John in the workplace. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... And then John's fired and he goes. <laughs> what happened and they go we're just uh we're laying off some people yeah exactly and he has to sit there wondering for the rest of his life if his entire career trajectory yeah. was shot at 45 degrees yeah. because of an inappropriate comment yes i'm i'm, I'm working it's just it's i'm working on a piece for for national view right now about this woman I, I i used to go like go to all these feminist conferences and stuff and i recognized her from from one of those she thinks that because she's she says fat black bitch is what she calls herself <laughs> they, they're owed reparations for being dehumanized regularly. Wait a minute. She calls herself a fat black bitch, and yes. she would like reparations. <laughs> yes. For what? Self abuse. She says. Well, then she has to pay for them. <laughs> she says she wants, uh, and she says, you know, she's she's abused every day. For she said she was dance. For example, she was dancing at a club, and a a thin white girl followed her around to record her dancing. And she chased. She grabbed her phone and smashed it to the ground. <laughs> and she says, she says. No, anybody tell me I didn't do the right thing, and you have to pay me. She says she wants, uh, let me be clear, when I say fuck you, pay me, I mean fuck you, pay me. Pay me a check, pay me consistently, provide me safe housing, offer me a Whoa. job with benefits, Whoa. run me those Beyonce tickets, <laughs> finance my clothes, my wigs and aesthetics, cultivate accessible spaces to provide seats that fit me and validate my humanity. Which, I mean, it seems like kind of a, like, kind of a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's millions. <laughs> that's millions. But she says, you know, uh, the and I quote, the intellectual, emotional, and actual physical labor fat black bitches provide is actually in invaluable to the entire world. So it's invaluable. So it's priceless. Wow. So, what is the value again? Because <laughs> it sounds like just in this case, it's very expensive. <laughs> it does. You film them dancing and you're out of <laughs> millions of dollars. Um, and the smashed phone. And a million five hundred. Yeah, this is this is what I'm what I'm writing about uh, today. I don't you this this uh, the fat justice movement's like a big deal now. You're unhealthy. Yeah. We have five hundred thousand deaths, obesity related deaths yeah. a year. That's bad. Yeah. You shouldn't be proud of being overweight. You shouldn't be proud of smoking. Right. You shouldn't be proud of drunk driving. Right. You shouldn't be proud of cutting. You're self harming. Right. And the other thing I think when I see these incredibly obese people is how hard it would be to maintain weight like that. Yeah, I think about that too. You'd have to eat, watch four movies a day. Yeah. Because you can't move. <laughs> right. You have to have at least six liters of Pepsi. <laughs> Like, we would just be projectile vomiting. I know, absolutely. How do you get it in? I don't know how you... I, I wonder that, too. Like, it must just be drinking, a, like, a lot of, of, like, beer and Pepsi. Yeah. And, and like... It's got to be soft. That's the only way you get that much sugar in. Because, you know, on Thanksgiving, you yeah. have that huge meal, and you are you have maybe two big plates, and you're destroyed. Yeah, you can't That's move. That's breakfast for a chubby. <laughs>
How do they go through it all? I don't know. And then, but it's like they're like we're being discriminated against. People look at us. Fun- You're massive. That's why people are looking you at look you. Look unusual. You, yeah. Dictionary definition: unusual. Yeah. Well, I thought the, the unusual thing that reminds me of, uh, well, we talked about this uh, already before, but uh, the, the mutual friend of ours who told you she had weird eyebrows. Oh, yeah, yeah, that didn't yeah, go well. That didn't go well. That was a two-week fight. I had Those... to write her a big email. <laughs> well, because your point was if you are single and you're a woman, you should try to look. You're marketing yourself. Yeah. Now, if you have a new product and you're going on Shark Tank, mm-hmm. you want the product to look as appealing as possible. Mm-hmm. You can have a model that's purple zebra striped. Yes. But the model you bring to Shark Tank should be beige. Yeah. And she's like, I'm not beige. I'm exciting. And I go, awesome. Yeah. I love the Sex Pistols. Yeah. But if you want someone to like your record label, maybe start out with Dave Matthews. Yeah. And then when they come in, go, by the way, Dave Matthews is nothing. We got Sex Pistols, Napalm Death, Conflict, the Verrukers, all kinds of crazy stuff over yeah. here. But don't come out of the gate with that. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, no, I'm unique. I'm special, blah, blah, blah. And I go, okay, but we're in New York City where the supply is more than the demand of women. Right. Women get trampled. Yes. used, discarded. And it's funny that I'm a conservative sexist and my <laughs> MO leaves women better off than these feminists who go, just keep fucking until your ovaries dry up and then just keep <laughs> going, get a dog. <laughs> You'll be great. Uh, I already have a cat. <laughs> oh, no. Do you say mommy's home when you get home? No. No, no, oh, no. Well, you're you're really in an interesting... Your stock is at its peak right now. Yeah. Because you're attractive. Mm-hmm. And I think women are... How old are you? 27. I think late 20s is when women get their most attractive. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondly, your mom just died. Right. And so that gives you depth. Yes. And I don't mean to other people. I mean genuinely... You're a heavier deal now. Yeah. You're less flighty. Absolutely. And then third, because you have a career, people know you're not insane. Like usually when they see someone with your level of beauty, Mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of lunatic baggage. She's going to throw bricks through your front window if you don't call her back. Right. We know you're mentally contained. Right. So uh, I would tread lightly now. Your your stock is at its peak. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm I'm, I'm doing... I'm doing uh, pretty well. I'm always just like, man, I, I don't know who to trust in terms of like because of the career thing. It's like, do you like me for me? Oh, who cares? <laughs> that's like that's like rich guys. Like you think Danny DeVito cares that some gorgeous eight wants him and it's part of his if that is his famous that's and money. Absolutely. That's you're absolutely right about that, I guess. Danny DeVito, what a disgusting looking <laughs> man. <laughs> like <laughs> What is he out of ten? I, I don't like I, he's like he, he's the zero. I mean No, you have to have burn victims and people who weigh fifteen hundred pounds. Hmm. Uh let's give him a I mean, I'm feeling generous today. I'm in a good mood. I'm going to throw a 2.8 around. A hard 2.8? Nice. A good 2.8. Yeah, my, my, I have a friend who refuses to watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia because she has, she does not believe ugly people should be on television. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Like, I wanted Bill Schultz's job at Red Eye. Yeah. And then Jono scooped me. Yes. And I was mad. Yeah. But then I also thought, who would I rather see in my living room every night? Right. This disgusting, wrinkled, hairy raisin with fur all over it? Mm-hmm. Or Miss Universe? Yeah, she's, she's, she's beautiful. These people are in your living room. They're yeah. invading your personal space. They should be aesthetically appealing. Absolutely. That Yeah, that makes sense. That's why she said she also has never watched Seinfeld because there's ugly people on it. <laughs> she's, like, she's awful. You would absolutely love her. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's got it. And that's the thing about in today's day and age is someone says something offensive and horrible and that you don't like the sound of. Right. And that's the end of it. And I kept even on, on Red Eye last night, I was saying... The Turkish president or prime minister, whatever he is, he said women should have three children, mm-hmm. and women who don't ever uh, have kids at home and become housewives die unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. And everyone was, ah, ha, 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 and, you know, Yanis Pappas and, and uh, what was her name, Liz McFarlane, and mm-hmm. people who don't have kids were all laughing at how absurd that is, and I just kept screaming, yes, I know it sounds bad, it sounds yeah. Archie Bunker, but what part of his argument is factually incorrect? All right, you've gotten a lot of shit for that also. I don't feel like I want kids, uh, and you tell me that I'm wrong. You are wrong. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. I'm not like, you know what? Screw you. Get out of here. You're, you're <laughs> blah, 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 blah. You're horrible. Like, I, don't, uh, that, I mean, that reaction, when people have that reaction, it's like, oh, you actually sound very miserable. <laughs> yeah, and go tell an alcoholic that he's an alcoholic. Yeah. They get real mad. <laughs> 
<laughs> Holy Toledo. You, get, you just end up lying and going, I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> You're not an alcoholic. They do. They absolutely do. Like, do you think you have a problem? What do you have a problem? The, I didn't drink like one day, like three months. Like, I, whatever. Yeah. I, really, I didn't drink that. You know what? You, you do. Yeah, I, I've, I've had that. I I've said that. to my dad once, I go, you have a drinking problem. You're an alcoholic. And my dad goes, the only problem I have with alcohol is that I'm addicted to it and it affects my life detrimentally <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's an answer. But a study came out today that said housewives are um, uh, the happiest women there are. Yeah. And and people go, how do you gauge happiness? Of course, every time these people are mad, they've never looked it up. There's many ways to gauge happiness. They give these people little counters. Yeah. And it's like an alarm. And, you know, every seven hours or four hours, you write down on a little notepad how you feel happy-wise. Yeah. And over the course of months and thousands and thousands of people, they can derive patterns. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think... At least with with me, like when I say like I'm fo I'm focusing my career right now, I am. I actually like am doing that. I hear people say that sometimes, like, well, I'm focusing my career. I'm like, you're a waitress. <laughs> yeah, or, or you know, ninety percent of jobs, you go, is this better than a human coming out of you and you shaping that human? Now, of course, there's exceptions. Barbara Corcoran, Maggie Thatcher, even like Kennedy. I look at her and I go, she's almost cursed with a talent. Yeah. Like she writes herself these incredibly complex monologues right. that are tongue twisters. Yes. Nails them one take every time. Yes. Maybe once a month it's two takes. Yeah. And I guess her and her family just go, I have this horrible curse called I'm good at TV. Yeah. It's probably making her, I have no idea how much she makes. I'm going to fart out 300 grand. <laughs> it's making us, our family 300 grand. That's two good salaries combined. Yeah. So dad, why don't you stay at home for a while? And he's like, look, it'd be better for the kids if you were here. Yeah. But this is just the free market has right. cursed us. Her kids are, are, are wonderful too. I love her family. Her, her and her husband have been together since they were like tw in their 20s. Like That's early amazing. 20s, which is amazing. He's great. He helped me. I didn't have a couch in my apartment. And uh, she gave me her co extra couch, and he, like, actually came and helped me move it into my apartment. I was like, you are very nice people. <laughs> <laughs> he's an uber man, right? Were, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, you are very, very nice people. My problem with Kennedy is the second the cameras are off, flumph. Those shoes are off, clogs are on. That's how I am, too. I know. Jonah's, all Fox women are like that. I can't walk in the heels. It's hard. If you want to, well, you're, you're doing fine for men, but ladies <laughs> out there, if you want a man... You have to wear heels three times a week. Ah. You have to avoid flip flops, mm. and you have to grow your hair long. Yeah, I cannot emphasize that. You enough. got in big trouble. What did you say about short hair? It's rape. <laughs> you remember that? What, what, what was the context? Well, of first that of all, ladies have changed the definition of rape to mean like anything where I wasn't having multiple orgasms. Mm -hmm. So okay, we can play that game. I remember I was fucking this girl named Jessica many, many years ago. And she's all right looking, you know. No, she's very attractive, actually. Mm -hmm. But she had sh short hair on the back, and then sort of most of her hair was up here mm -hmm. on the front. And uh, fucking her, it's great, you know, very rough lady. And uh, <laughs> I turn her around, and I'm fucking her from behind, and I look down, yeah. and there's a 12-year-old boy on my dick. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's rape. I'm not a big fan of fornicating with young boys. That's good. I'm not in. I'm not in ISIS. That's that's good too. This is not jihad here. So you said that, and people were right. But the, the rape that yeah we're right. It's rape, the affirmative consent where you're supposed to keep asking constantly over and over again. Of course, yeah. Are you still okay? Yeah. Are you still what okay? What if I changed personality? Like I became a chick while we were horsing around. Yeah. Like X Men. Yeah. If you morph into. <laughs> Like uh, Barack Obama, while we're fornicating, that's rape. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. I would like when I was looking at this uh, this uh, fat black whatever article. It was like I like fell fat into fat black article. Like, that's what she calls it. I like I don't know what to say other than call it that. Uh, I was like f I fell into like the depths of. So I, I'm always in, like the depths of social justice internet all day, and it's just yep. like it's not even that far from. I mean, like there's articles like I love my boyfriend and my girlfriend. And it's the same person, oh, you know, <laughs> and like it's just such a lie. It's just such cognitive dissonance, you know, I mean, you don't believe that I it's it's on the, the you read the Daily Mail. It's like all over. I identify as a cat now. I do this and that. And, and, and it's just like you got to wonder. I mean, what's I don't know what's what's going on there. <laughs> I have a lot of theories mm -hmm. about it, and I think the best one I can come up with is White males are the worst, right? And I think yes. white males with most of these people look like daddy, and so they have a daddy issue. What's the daddy issue? I believe, and this is pure conjecture, that they took a stupid course in college, mm -hmm. like speech pathology. 
Mm -hmm. They went 200 grand in debt. Dad looks down on you. He's yeah. disappointed in you. You blew tons of money. You're not making any money. You screwed up royally. Yeah. And so when I look at dad, I feel bad about myself. But if I discredit dad and say patriarchy's wrong, everything about him is wrong, I have a black gay boyfriend with AIDS, everything that makes him unhappy is good, and now I don't feel bad about myself. Yeah. You don't understand peach speech pathology, dad. <laughs> yeah, I see. I have a great relationship with my dad. My dad's like my best friend. He's a wonderful guy. Isn't he on Twitter as Timph's dad? He's on, so his name is Dan Timph, and he's at Dad Timph. It's <laughs> brilliant. It's like a brilliant marketing move. But he's a good guy. And how old are your kids? You have Nine, two, seven, and three. Nine, seven, and three, yeah. Your, your daughter is hilarious. She's a woman. She's so, well, didn't she, I saw like on your Instagram, she had like a birthday cake where it was like over the hill. Yeah, uh, that was her idea. It was a grave. Yeah. It was a gravestone, R.I.P., and it said over the hill. That was her eighth birthday, I guess, or maybe it was the ninth. Yeah. But I sort of have two kids and a roommate. Like, if we go out for cupcakes and tea, yeah, it's fine. And it doesn't hurt that all my kids have horse voices. Yeah. There's something about a kid with a horse voice. It is the cutest thing. Like, there's a sketch that Mr. Show did called, uh, God, I forget what it's called, but it's about a guy whose parents are retarded. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he's at school and he, he but the Bob Lamont story, uh -huh. he's at school and his, his thermos is just full of cutlery and his sandwich is a sponge with dice. Mm -hmm. And he runs home and his brother, his little brother sitting there on the couch and he's t been tied to the couch with yarn and he has a pot on his head yeah. <laughs> and he's got frozen peas and a beer. And uh, Bob Lamont goes, did mom and dad leave you here? Have you eaten today? And the little kid goes, I got some frozen peas and a beer. <laughs> and it's seven times funnier with a horse voice. Yeah. It is I, the cutest thing on earth. I had like a horse voice and like. So you, you have I one still now. Do. I it's don't know why. Very cute. Ugh. I don't know if t late 20s can be cute. I don't know either, but I'm, I'm still trying to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I want to say about the fat black article? Yes. <laughs> I was thinking about, I might do the, uh, something on this uh, today, but um, I was thinking about my own youth, right, as a punk rocker. Right. And when we, we got kicked out of the house at 18, because our parents were sick of us, because the whole thing about being punk is like, fuck you, dad. Yeah. You have to do that every day. <laughs> so eventually when it's legal, they go, get out of here. And you're like, good, I want to get out of here. Yeah. And then you live in the basement of a big house. We, what we would do is we'd, uh, the neatest looking guy would get a side part and he would get the house. And yeah. then we would all, 13 of us, live in there. Okay. And I was down by the boiler on a cot. Uh, I was happy to just go to the house because I could get laid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the cops would beat you up, especially in Europe. The co in Paris, the cops just beat up punks every day in mm -hmm. the 80s. Um, and people would laugh at us. You know, you'd be on the bus. People would laugh. You you couldn't get a job. Yeah. If you had a blue mohawk, no one wants you at their front desk. Right. And it wasn't. I'm not complaining about it, obviously. But then you take that same lifestyle and you juxtapose it to 2016. You have these refugees in uh in in germany right now going we are living in tents we are living like animals the food <laughs> this is not even real fruit juice this is sugar with fruit concentrate <laughs> oh my God. and you're like when i was 20 we were dumpster diving yeah so my fun youth is your idea of hell or that fat black woman going people were laughing at me first of all you're obese and it looks funny <laughs> but when you have like a cheetah chrome Leather jacket with studs and a blue mohawk. Peep, little kids laugh at you. You don't go, what are you doing? This is my lifestyle choice. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, exactly. So a normal, like we, when I was a little kid too, four eyes got beat up, fat yeah. people got beat up. You got a wedgie. Even if you were cool and you got an A plus in math, you're getting a wedgie. Yeah. When I was an immigrant, I had an English accent. That was pounded out of me in a week. Yeah. If that happened today, it would be national news. It would be national news. It would. They can't even handle our 70s upbringing. No, well, it's like it's it's like now, you know, the colleges are encouraging students who who are adults to report, like report Grown if, men. if somebody's mean to you. Like there's online reporting bias incidents, but if you go through them, they're just like somebody said something. I, I saw someone say something that was like, you know, do seventy five year olds even know this is going? I on? don't think they do. You, you talk to a seventy five year old, and he's missing a tooth, and he replaced it with cardboard, <laughs> and then he has this giant machete scar on his arm that he doesn't want to talk about that he didn't get stitches in, so it looks like a yeah. fat cesarean scar. Yeah, they just sort of like would make stuff, yeah. like the newspaper in the shoe. Everyone 
had newspaper in their shoes. Yeah. In the forties, fifties, probably sixties. Yeah. My you know, my my gram like my grandma was homeless when she was younger. Like, <laughs> you know, and it's like then my mom my mom grew up in a house in Detroit with eleven people, wow. two bedrooms. <laughs> like that's insane. She did never wanted to hear me complain about anything. You know. Yeah. I mean like, <laughs> my dad it, it was three boys in a bed. Yeah, they had three two her and two you sisters. You must have had a, a boner occasionally. I don't ew, I never thought about that. Three fourteen year old boys wet dreaming their heads off? That's, Ew, that's, gross. that's not humane. <laughs> Those are not. Imagine we did that to refugees. <laughs> I am having wet dreams next to my brother. It is disgusting. Oh, you mean my dad's life? Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna go into an ad read after that <laughs> yeah. one, and, uh, and so that way it's uh, these. The views of Gavin McGinnis do not represent the views of me and or Barstool Sports. Yes, they Sports. do. Okay. Uh, so you know what. Uh, it, it, why is finding a great fitting, comfortable bra so hard? Okay, but Third Love is an exciting new lingerie brand that uses real women's measurements to create better fitting bras. I uh, I have one of these bras. It's a pretty nice bra. It's a comfortable comfortable bra. It's kind of like you're not even even wearing a bra, and you know who who wants to wear a bra, right? Um, it's there's a hundred percent fit guarantee. The re- the returns and exchanges are f- always free. Um, you get the bra, you can uh, wash it, you can take the tags off, wear it for 30 days, just pay shipping. They will not charge your card until after the 30 days. And if you don't love this bra, mm-hmm. if you don't love it, you can just send it back and your card will never be charged at all. So you just pay for for the shipping. Uh, and, you know, in order to get this this free trial offer, you just go to www.thirdlove.com slash cat, as in K K A T like me, uh, www.thirdlove.com slash cat. The, the cups, the cups are made out of memory foam. Oh. So once your boob goes in, it re- it like remembers the shape of the boob. So so it, it's you know personalized just for you. It molds to your shape to truly give you the 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 perfect fit. Okay, and again, Third Love stands behind this product so much that they will give any of my listeners a try at this bra for free. Take the tags off, wash it, wear it. Really just make it your bra. If you don't love it, they'll never charge your card after 30 days. www.thirdlove.com slash cat, K-A-T. And ladies, I cannot emphasize enough. If you have asymmetrical breasts, <laughs> what this does is it takes the hit on one side and what you see on the outside is perfect symmetry. <laughs> Doesn't oh asymmetrical? We there, make asymmetry our problem. You just get symmetry. Mm, there you, <laughs> you should make. You're gonna steal the sponsor from me with that brilliant <laughs> point. I dated an asymmetrical girl once, and she would just sort of go floop, 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 and give the right one a jiggle. And I don't know. I guess that would bring blood to it or something. Really, and it would even them out. How asymmetrical we talk? I couldn't notice, but you know, w- women know all yeah. their flaws way too well. Yeah, I, one of my feet's bigger than the other. Ew, gross. Isn't that gross? That's why I have a hard time walking in heels. <laughs> <laughs> do you get you don't get two different size size no, shoes? No, do that's you? I don't, but it's like I'm like well like almost a half size bigger on my one foot than How my other. How did that happen? I don't know, but it's like Joanne will make fun of me for the way that I walk in heels <laughs> and I'm like, I gotcha. It's it's true. But you know, I c- it could have worse things to be asymmetrical. Yeah. Like a giant boob and a little well, boob. Well, the face. Beauty yeah. is symmetry. Yeah. And even flies that are symmetrical tend to procreate more than asymmetrical flies. Really? The definition of beauty is symmetry, and most beauty is in the face. Yeah, that's true, I Especially, guess. Especially, man, we can work everything out. Even that sphere at Walmart that's just a bowling ball with a face on the top <laughs> and shower shoes on the bottom, someone is boning her. Yeah. Someone worked it out. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, is I don't, I don't, th- there's no such thing as somebody's too ugly for that nobody will have sex with you. Not in women. In men, sure. Really? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think looks matter less to women. Oh, yeah, that's a good... Well, I guess I should say, if you're also a loser. <laughs> like, a woman can be hot and a loser, and we'll work it out. A man can't be ugly and a loser. No. And, guys, you don't need to be rich. You need to be ambitious. Yes. I don't care if you you want a, a stupid job like being a photographer, mm-hmm. or you want to be a rock star, whatever idiotic pursuit you have. If you're up at nine on a Monday and doing it, a woman will find you attractive. Yeah. No, that's true. I've 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 had a lot of the the oh I'm gonna be an artist. I'm like, well, you're sitting on the couch. And yeah, you're stoned. Artist. <laughs> any job where everyone else wants to be it, you better hustle. Like with an artist, like a visual artist. Yeah. 
you not only have to be good at your job, but you have to go out and schmooze in New York and make friends with other artists and be constantly, you know, star fucking basically. Yeah. It's ugh, what a horrible job. Yeah, I know. It's like I like having insurance. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was we were doing I'm getting back into making commercials to make some money and I was looking at these videos of extras mm -hmm. and I'm just thinking what a bunch of losers. Yeah. You're going to do these commercials, you'll make 50 to 100 bucks. You have mm -hmm. to audition, by the way, right. like crazy. And then maybe if you do like 100, you might be the centerpiece of an Arby's ad. Yep. Eventually and get 3,000 bucks. Yeah, no, it's so sad. I have so many. I just feel like there's so many people like in New York, like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be an actress. I've been here for like five years Ugh. to 10 years. And it just makes me want to cry inside. Get a man. Like, like yeah, yeah, it's, it's sad. With me, it's like if I, you know, I was like, I'm going to move to New York. And I'm going to try to be on TV. And, like, it worked so Did far. It. Yeah. Like, so far, you never know. But, like, I feel like eventually, if it just wasn't working, I'd be like, eh, all right. You know what uh, discourages me about our, our common uh, employer? Uh, and I know we don't like to shoot in the tent. But a lot of the time I'm talking to these women, and it's it's a lot of family, a lot of parenting comes up as, mm -hmm. as subjects. And I'm looking around the room, and I'm thinking, no one here has kids. A lot of people have kids. Not a lot of the people I talk to. Mm. And I'm I'm thinking because it's really hard yeah. to get successful enough that you're on TV, and a lot of those people are so busy and so yeah. career driven they don't have time for kids. Yeah. And it's you know there's a window there that you got to take advantage of, and you're like, in the window Cat, right now. Get pregnant. <laughs> get well. Get a ring on it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But you must have some suitors. I feel like you have a spare and a pair. <laughs> I have suitors. Yes. I have suitors. And you're waiting to drop the hammer? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, I've had my heart broken, and I'm a little... I'm mad about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pissed about that. Really pissed. Yeah, me too. And he was a loser who was below you, so he should have counted his chickens. Yeah, that, you know what? I think so. People should. People should count their chickens. Maybe some men, though, they get overwhelmed. Like, I, I know Chloe Sevigny's boyfriend, the Matt from Airy Weapons, he ended up cheating on her and he blew the whole relationship. And that was going to be the one. Like, she was going to yeah. have kids with him and stuff. And I think he was overwhelmed by her success. Yeah. And he just couldn't stand being in the shadows. Yeah. Plus, when you're an actress, you're gone for four months at a time. Right. That's true. I mean, I don't know. Speaking of the actress, Miles, did you hear Ben Kissel is the new face of Kmart's Big and Tall? No Isn't way. That amazing? <laughs> Isn't that the best thing you've ever heard in yes, your whole life? That's great. I can't. I'm going to, like, go to Kmart and just see <laughs> picture he is and big he, and tall he is big and tall and he was fat so that's also inspiring exactly. to other he, gigantic fat people. right he was fat and he lost weight he was trying to like that we there, there's like a uh uh we have like a mutual friend who's they just call him big fat dan he's a big guy and he's a vegetarian but he just eats blocks of cheese sorry dude not yeah working. it's not but he's like he's he'll, he's like weight loss advice like instead of eating like two instead of ordering two pork burritos just like get one yeah. like you know to people he's like it, slim you right down it's, it's like it's if you're that big it's so easy to to lose weight we had a buddy in up in toronto we called fat peter mm -hmm. <laughs> like if you just recreate a normal 80s 90s person yeah it's abuse yeah. But fat peter remember people some we were we used to do this thing where we go yeah. At bars, when someone put on the jukebox and ruined their song because they couldn't yeah. hear, because there's like 15 guys going, <laughs> "Shut the fuck up!" And then she goes, "What are you fucking laughing at, fatso?" And we're like, "He's fat, Peter." <laughs> That's like telling you know Elvis that he's a rock and roller. Yeah. Uh, but um, he he lost almost 100 pounds doing that Dance Dance Infinity game where you jump on those things. Really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he played it every day for years, and we just saw his giant polo shirts become XXXL <laughs> dripping off of him. That's amazing. Yeah. That's an inspirational story also. Tell your fat friend to play that game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just, I walk. If, if, I, if I ever got fat, I'd be like, this is not okay. It, it's not. That's what I don't get about the chubbies is say you had these the shoes, <laughs> and they, you know, they, they give you a blister on the back of your Achilles, on your Achilles heel. You'd go... I'm not wearing these anymore. Or yeah. or say, you know, whatever you do. Like if you're working at your desk and you notice your back hurts, you go, this is not, I got to change. Maybe I'll do that standing up thing people are doing yeah. where my desk is high. You'll fix it Yeah. very early on in the game. But these these people who are, you know, over 250 pounds, they have to do a thing where they shimmy to the <laughs> edge of the couch. Yeah. Like getting up is an ordeal. And then they're at the couch and then it's like one, two, oh, and they throw themselves <laughs> forward. And then, whoa, it's like walking on stilts.
I don't understand how you get to that and you go, well, we'll work it out tomorrow. <laughs> like, you can't get up. <laughs> it's a major hassle. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like the easiest way to live. I just don't understand it. Like, if I kept flicking you in the forehead every day, you'd go, I'm getting away from that Gavin guy. <laughs> he keeps flicking me. I have, like, a praying to Muhammad mark on my mm -hmm. forehead. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> it's really confusing. It is confusing. I mean, it's, but it's, 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 it's now it's not just about, like, fat acceptance. It's like, it's like celebrating it. Yeah, which is so weird. It's like junkie pride. Yeah. I like when they, they go, you know, when you mock me, uh, and shame me. It actually makes me eat more. It doesn't <laughs> oh, yeah. help me. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> I don't care if you jump off a cliff. I'm making fun of you to amuse myself and my friends. That's why I'm videotaping you fat black woman dancing. I'm not trying to help you. Yeah. It's like when someone's a cokehead and they're, I go, do you, you have any hee-haw? Yeah. And they're like, no, man, I'm clean. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't care if you're dying of it. I just want to do a bump. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I got some here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's it, well, it's also, I mean, it's it's like a, it's killing so many people. It's so bizarre. And <laughs> it's. I was reading about this. I just wrote an article about this whole trans people in sports. Yeah. And what a great example this is of the the cognitive dissonance of you pretending men are women. And there's that guy Fallon Fox who grew some tits. I don't even know if he has a penis. I Probably don't know. not. Probably. He beat the living crap out of this woman exactly a year ago today. Tam Tamika Brents, I think, is her name. And she goes, I've never felt so overpowered in my life. Yeah. Yeah, because a dude beat you up. Yeah. And the irony of the left's sort of Marxist view of the world where they just come up with an idea and then enforce it on reality is women end up getting the crap out of him. He knocked her unconscious. Yeah. And he's like, the top MMA fighter in the world, yeah. female MMA fighter is a dude. And then they had this guy in Alaska with a crazy name you could never remember, like Numfayap, I got that mm -hmm. Inuit dude destroyed a track and field and killed all these other girls, some uh, as young as in ninth grade. Yeah. And they're sitting there carefully saying, you know, watching their pronouns going, I think it's great that this person is happy with who they are, but I'm not sure this race was 100% fair. Yeah. Yeah, because men are, have more muscles. Men do have more muscles. Sorry. Men have, I mean, that's the, the thing too, like with even like, e even with people who are cisgender, they're like, yeah, well, just because you're a woman doesn't mean you're not... You know, like, I've read a thing about how it's a microaggression for, like, a teacher to be like, I need some, like, strong guys to help me move something in the classroom. It's like, no, 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 but they're, they are stronger. Yeah. Man, like, look at this arm right here. I'm not lifting shit. It looks like El Elmo's arm. <laughs> I know. You have the same arm as Bob. Elmo. <laughs> Doesn't it kind of look like a SpongeBob thing? Yeah. I mean. I've never done a push-up. <laughs> I've tried. A man, if a man can't do 20 push-ups, he gets laughed out of town and they throw rotten fruit at him on the way out. <laughs> if a woman can do one push-up, she's a bull dyke. He's, he's saying that he's she's saying that we have five minutes left. So we're not, five minutes. Yeah. I've only begun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I think it'd be good if I could do one push up. That'd be good. It'd be great. Well, here's what we've done here. We've taken away childbirth. Right. So it's like going up to Superman when we he has to go back to to Krypton or whatever his his house is. It's made mm -hmm. of, of crystal. <laughs> Right. Bye, everybody. Uh, thank you uh, for listening. And, uh, you know, we're all going to die someday. Have a good, have a good night.